This video will give you an overview on how you can measure the data for a modal analysis quite easily by using the roving accelerometer method. A good reason to choose this method is simply because you can't reach all measurement points with your hammer. Especially in a tight engine bay, there is usually no room to swing the hammer. The accelerometer can be placed in such locations to avoid these difficulties. This brings another advantage against the roving hammer method. Using roving accelerometer, the data of several accelerometers can be analyzed at once. We demonstrate that here with two triax accelerometers. If you use hundreds of channels, you can save a lot of time in an iterative measuring campaign. We start in Artemis by choosing, in data acquisition, the tab Roving Accelerometer. First, we describe our object. As the next step, we can import model data, if available, which comes with the advantage that all points to be measured are offered as a kind of to-do list. We just want to measure the housing. Therefore, I delete the unneeded points, and my measuring plan is ready. The intended sensor can be applied easily by drag and drop to the attached channels. Or, I retrieve the TED's information, then it's even easier. Let's come to the supposed most complicated part, setting up the adequate analysis parameters. For this, a few test strikes are sufficient. From that, Artemis Suite develops a reasonable combination of pre-trigger, threshold, measuring range, sampling rate, block size, and windowing settings for this measurement object. Now we will measure. Artemis Suite suggests the positions for all involved sensors according to the measurement plan. The correct position and orientation can easily be aligned optically between object and model. Now we always excite the same reference point with our impulse hammer. Already the next positions for all sensors are suggested. So we move the accelerometer and apply it at spot number 3. If for any reason the sensor does not fit in this way and we have to turn it, then we just do that and adjust the new alignment in the model. And so again, we are faultless. During the data acquisition, the quality of each impact is checked automatically. At this point, of course, we have an overload, which Suite detects and adapts the range automatically for this location. You just need to keep on striking, and all points will be retrieved correctly. It's that simple. At the end, the acquired transfer functions are returned to the 3D model. The correct assignment of positions and orientations happens automatically. Here, the critical mode shapes of the test object can be calculated and visualized, and you understand why the one lawnmower hums more than the other. Now everything is clear.